Welcome to the simulation for NESI2. Uh, NESI2 has three parts, the NESI2 front end, the NESI2 back end and the Asgard viewer, uh, which, is, uh, which helps to view the simulation from a hardware perspective and not from uh, the software perspective. So uh, the NESI2 front end, we have already started the NESI2 front end and the NESI2 back end. So first of all, we'll, we'll just view the NESI2 front end. It has uh, two perspectives, the network editing perspective and the network simulation perspective. So in the network editing perspective, we have profiles, the various scenarios, and the sessions. So I've loaded uh, everything beforehand. But first of all, we'll just view the the whole net, the whole network. What we're trying to do uh, in this project is we're trying to simulate uh, an environment wherein, uh, suppose we have five domains. For example, over here we have KCL, UCL, Imperial, City, and LSE. Suppose they all pull in their resources together and they are a cloud. So they, sh they pull in their resources and they have, instead of having individual firewalls, they pull in their resources and they have a single firewall which is being used to access the internet. So th this is what uh, we're trying to do over here. And we're trying to analyze how the firewall would behave uh, in, in cases wherein we have a normal traffic without any attacks or any malicious activity over the network, be it from any of the domains. And the second case is where we are analyzing where the, how the firewall would behave, suppose if there is an attack, and but the firewall is capable of handling that. And the last but not the least is the one wherein the firewall would uh, show us how it would behave uh, in case of a heavy attack and what happens if the firewall gets overwhelmed. So that's what we, we're going to do. So getting back to the the network editing uh, perspective, we have these profiles which have been used uh, in the in our project. So uh, let's just start with it. The advanced firewall is is the one which the application which was developed by me. Uh, as we can see, this is the one that I I developed. And uh, when we add it here, we can just give it a name and we can define the various uh, aspects. We we can configure them according to our needs. So similarly, we have the DDoS attacker profile, wherein uh, we have the various specifications of the IP address, wherein which we want to attack, the port number and the packet size, and all those things. Similarly, we have an eco client which is gives uh, eco requests. Similarly, we have an eco server which just handles those requests. A firewall application, which is a stub application, which is provided by NSE to release itself. And uh, we have added two applications in this profile, the firewall default application, which specifies the port number and no packet limit, uh, as against the one that I have developed, and uh, one more condition that I had given, which is not over here. And similarly, we also have an XML firewall, which handles uh, various other XML attacks. Similarly, we have the mail server, which is just a web service server application, which has handles server-based requests. We have a payload attacker profile. Uh, it's 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 a web service client application, uh, and the type we can select over here is a payload attacker. Similarly, we have over here our XML bomb attacker, which is a similar manner, and a spam attacker, the same kind. And similarly, we have web service client, which is just a normal client. So we we'll straight away go to a UDP client, which is a UDP client request, or UDP server, which handles those UDP. Uh, client requests and uh, a web service provider which handles those web service client requests. So these are all the profiles. Now uh, we have the various scenarios. Uh, in in our case, the normal usage. We'll just show that, and it's it's it it is being run for 1,000 ticks and being run only once. Similarly, we have an overwhelmed firewall which is being run for 900 ticks and. We have a capable firewall simulation, which is being run for 888 ticks, because the the software is so, so resource intensive. It takes a lot of memory and so much time to load. That's why it's been limited to this kind of ticks and this kind of an environment. Okay, uh, due to the time constraints, I'm not going to load them over here because it takes a lot of time to load them. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the ones which have already been done which have already been recorded in the network simulation over here. But I'll just run one of them to show you how it behaves uh, on, an, on the Asgard viewer. So we'll just run the normal simulation. 
and notice over here we have the simulation platform and the SCA which is a simulation control agent and the NCA which is a network simulation coordination agent uh, is used for coordinating a single simulation and for synchronizing all the device management agent agents that are representing the subset of the devices of the network uh, over here we have four device management agents since this is a quad core machine which uh, wherein we have one one agent for each of the core and this helps in load balancing so this is how the simulation runs so I'm just gonna pause it and return back when it's finished we loaded the normal usage scenario and we observe the traffic overall traffic for the the whole network the statistics over here and uh, we observe the traffic for the various links over here likewise we can observe the traffic uh, traveling through the firewall on towards the right hand side which is the internet or the access router connect connecting it through to the internet like that so we will run the simulation and we can observe the traffic being generated from all of the domains passing through the firewall and towards the right hand side so this is how the simulation is running and here then we can observe the number of ticks that's how a normal usage scenario usually works like right. similarly we have uh, the overwhelm and the capable firewalls the capable firewall works in a similar manner uh, the only difference being the attacks genera are generated over here and the traffic which is traveling through towards the core towards the internet is lesser than the traffic which is being generated from the left hand side so due to the limited time I'm not going to show that but we can if you but if interested you can view that from the links or uh, one of the links which has been given in the appendix because I have separate I have recorded separate videos for all these simulations over here I'm just going to next show you the simulation for the overwhelmed firewall how it behaves when the firewall is overwhelmed so I'm just going to run that and I'm just going to pause the video for that okay the simulation has now loaded for the overwhelm firewall and uh, we can observe the traffic generated from various nodes over here we can also see the overall uh, the DDoS attack packets, the payload requests pack, uh, packets, the bombs, the various attacks which have been performed on over the network and these are the various graphs for the uh, traffic generated from these nodes and now when you click over to this one uh, the one over the right you observe that it doesn't display any traffic so uh, let's just run the simulation and see how it behaves now we play the simulation and we see that the traffic is generated but the firewall is overwhelmed and there is no traffic generated on towards the right side there is no traffic being passed onto the right side so the firewall is blocking everything and it's a perfect example of a distributed denial of service so that's the basic demonstration of the NC2 thank you for watching